to Hot Thai Kitchen. It's a cold winter day in San Francisco today, perfect for what we're gonna make. We're gonna make a nice soup called Tom Kha Gai. Let's take a little Thai lesson, okay? Tom means to boil. Now, when it's a food name, it means a light, brothy soup. Ka is galangal. Now, galangal is a root that looks like this. And I've used it before in my first episode of Hot Thai Kitchen, the Tom Yam Kung episode. And it's a citrusy, woody, really unique smell. And that is going to give the predominant flavor of our soup. That's why the soup is named after it. And then Kai means chicken, which is the meat most commonly used in the soup. So, let's get going. We're going to start with, what I have here is two cups of coconut milk. Now, if you've seen my green curry episode, you know that I use the kind that comes in a carton like this. And the reason being, this is 100% coconut milk, no preservatives are added, it has not been homogenized, and it tastes and feels the closest to fresh coconut milk. Alright, so, we're going to use that, but if you can't find it, and if you want to use the canned ones, that works as well. And to that, I'm going to add equal parts water, so it's going to be two cups of water. Now, to thin this out. If you're using the canned coconut milk, add another cup because it's usually a thicker consistency. All right? So that's our base. And to this, we're going to add all of our herbs. So first, of course, we're going to add our ka, or our galangal roots, which is the main flavor. So I've sliced it up into about rounds thin like this. So you give a lot of surface area for the flavors to infuse. OK, about 10. Off they go, in there. Next, it's my favorite, favorite herb of all time, kaffir lime leaves. Kaffir lime leaves look like this, and it's got a really strong, unique citrus smell, and it's fantastic. You can't eat it, it's really tough, but if you really thinly chiffonade it, you can actually, uh, you can actually eat it. I like to put it in some of my curries, and um, but if you're going to leave it whole, make sure you don't eat it. Okay, so what we're going to do, is we're just going to tear them and try to tear them aggressively so that they bruise at the same time because when you bruise it, you help it release all of its flavors. So that's going in there. Last one. That's going in there. And I have about five, six leaves in there. Next, our last herb is lemongrass. Now, if you've seen my Tom Yam Kung episode, you know how to prep lemongrass. And if you haven't, here's a lesson. First, you're going to cut off the end. And then you're going to cut off this green woody part here. All right. And now we're going to smash it. We're going to smash it with the back of our knives. Same principle. Bruise the cells, break up the flavors, help it infuse into your soup. All right. So just go for it. Oops. Careful. Okay. That looks good enough. Now we're going to cut it into about an inch and a half chunks. And off they go as well. All right, and we're going to let put this on the stove. And we're going to let it cook. Uh, after it's come to a boil, you're going to let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. Give it time. Now the good thing about having coconut milk in that broth is that a lot, some of the flavor molecules in herbs are water soluble and some are fat soluble. And when you have both fat from the coconut milk and water, more of the, of the flavor components, uh, of the flavor compounds are able to dissolve into the soup. So we'll come right back to this in about 15 minutes. So it's been about 15 minutes and our soup is smelling really good. My entire apartment smells great. So it's time for us to add some mushrooms and chicken. Now if you come back to the soup after 15 minutes and you feel like it's reduced a little too much and the soup has gotten too thick or you've got very little liquid left, just add some more water to it to get back to that consistency of, of a thin brothy coconut soup. All right? So. I'm going to add, first of all, before I add the mushrooms, some Thai chilies. Um, this soup is not an overly spicy soup. It's, it's going to have a little bit of a kick to it, but it's not like Tom Yam Gung where it's going to really kick you off your seat. So just two, or one, 
You don't even have to put any in if you don't want to. This is, this is like comfort food soup. You want to be comfortable with eating it. Now, next, we're going to add oyster mushrooms. All right, oyster mushrooms. Uh, they're going to add, take about a couple minutes to cook, so we're going to add them first. After the mushrooms have wilted a little bit, look at all those herbs. We're going to add about two breasts of chicken that I've cut um, into bite-sized pieces, and I marinated this in, in some fish sauce for a few hours. We're going to add that to our soup. So our chicken is done, and our mushrooms is also done, and it is looking very good. Now is the time for our seasoning. You can come take a look at uh, what our soup is looking like right now. Now, if you notice, I have all the herbs still in there, and that's very traditional. We leave all the herbs in there. We're not supposed to eat them. You will not be able to chew and swallow them because they're really hard, but uh, for almost for garnish, so you know the flavors that are in there to visually represent the taste in your mouth, all right? So make sure your guests know not to eat the herbs in there if you've got guests, all right? So for seasoning, we're going to use three tablespoons of fish sauce, all right? That's gonna be our salty component. And to that, we're going to add about a tablespoon and a half of lime juice. In it goes. And then about about a half a tablespoon of uh, palm sugar. Now palm sugar, the one that I get comes in a little block like this, and this is gonna take forever to dissolve, so I just chop it up into little, almost sand-like, clay-like, not clay, but sand-like texture like that. So about half a tablespoon, you can just eyeball it, and then we're gonna give it a taste. Now. When it comes to seasoning this soup, I'm giving you a rough estimate of all my measurements, but it really depends on, one, how much your liquid has reduced. If your liquid has reduced, reduced more than mine, you're not going to need to use as much. And if you like it saltier, if you like it more sour, that's completely up to you. I've learned over the years of cooking for people that people's salt palate can be anywhere from here to here. Some people think, given the same food, some people think it's bland, some people think it's overly salty. So that's something that you've got to, to learn uh, to adjust yourself. So I'm going to give this a taste. That's pretty good. But I think it's going to need a little more saltiness. Now I'm not going to add fish sauce. I'm going to add a little more salt. Reason is this. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon. The reason is this is a delicate flavor soup. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have unlike the tom yam gung soup, it's got chili paste, it's got lots of chilies and shrimps, it's got strong flavors. It can handle fish sauce, a lot of fish sauce. This soup is delicate. And if you add too much fish sauce, it becomes a little too fishy. So after three tablespoons, make up the rest of the saltiness with salt. So your soup doesn't get too too fishy. And then I also think it needs a little bit more lime. See what I mean about adjustment? The last time I made this, that's the measurements that I needed. But now, you know, the amount of liquid that has reduced in my pot is different. So I need to adjust my seasoning accordingly. So about a little bit of that. By the way, I took a little poll on Facebook asking my friends what I should make on, uh, on my next Hot Thai Kitchen. And this, Thom Kakai, was the number one winner. So it's very popular. All right, so I'm going to taste it again. Mmm, perfect. That is really good. That's perfect. Just a little bit of spiciness, sour, salty, sweet, well-balanced, smooth mouthfeel. It's perfect. Now we're going to dish it up. Now we're going to garnish that with a little bit of cilantro. Always a nice little color added to that. And there it is. Tom Kha Gai. Now you can eat this with rice. That's traditionally how we use it. My mom likes to put it in, put the soup in a little bowl and put the rice in the bowl and make it into a rice soup. Or I just like to pour it over my rice on the plate. And however you want, you can just eat it as is without any rice if that's what you want. But here we go. Tom Kha Gai on Hot Thai Kitchen. Thank you for tuning in and